The heart is the home of your personal life because it has to do with your feelings, your character, and all your attributes. It comes from your heart, which is why the scripture says that you should guard your heart above all else because all the issues of life comes from the heart. When we talk about the quest to have a pure heart, it means you value the cleanliness of your home because if your heart is your home just like in the natural the way you keep your home clean the way you make sure that everything is tidy and well kept same should you do with your heart how to have a pure heart before god having a pure heart before god will affect the relationships you build with other human beings a pure heart speaks of a heart free of contamination of pollution and of perverseness because there are a lot of perverseness from sexual perversion to all other forms of perversion that exists in the world. But when you have a pure heart as a child of God, all the dirty things, all the things that are considered unclean to God will be things that you try to Watch your heart from such things, evil desires, lust, and all other forms of works of the flesh. I have five points for you to consider to have a pure heart before God. But then these five points are not the entirety of everything that has to do with how to have a pure heart before God. My number one point is, a pure heart before God does not denote a perfect heart, but a clean heart. God has not ever asked any human being to have a perfect heart because God himself knows that we are not perfect and we can't have a perfect heart. Because from the beginning, man fell and every human being born is born with that Adamic nature. And the scripture makes us to know that the imagination of man's heart is evil from childhood, from birth. And David speaks of it in Psalms 51 when he committed sin of killing Uriah and taking the wife. I was born a sinner. In sin was I conceived. This is to point to every human being and all of us that we can't have a perfect act. So when the Bible mentioned blessed are the pure in heart. At some point I thought, how can I be pure in heart? In my religious mind, I thought pure in heart meant being perfect in heart, which means as I've received Jesus, I will never have an evil thought crossed my mind. My life is supposed to be perfect. Everything about me is supposed to be intact. But then it's not my heart being perfect. It's about my heart being clean. Because the Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, not the perfect in heart. And the Greek word used for the pure in heart means clean heart, which is for something to be clean, your house, your dress to be clean, it needs to be washed. Depending on the material that it is, for a gold to be pure, it needs to be put in fire. But for you and your heart as a child of God or as a Christian, to have a pure heart before God is to get your heart to God for cleaning, for cleansing, which is to clean your heart from all impurities of the world and all the pollutions of the culture. Point number two on how to have a pure heart. To have a pure heart is not automatic, but it is intentional. By the time you believe in Jesus and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, it does not mean that immediately everything about your life becomes automatically pure. It now takes you to intentionally commit to God because you accepting to work with Jesus means you are committed to obey him, obey his word, and walk with him. David in Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. It is very intentional. I have hidden, which is it's my responsibility to hide your word in my heart so that I can know when I am missing the mark. Whether it's my relationship is to get in the word of God or know what am I to do and what am I not to do. Because I don't want to miss God. I value God and then I want to have a pure heart. So what am I to do is to hide his word in my heart, which is I need to soak myself into every word of God. So just like you would have a home, you would want to clean your home every morning as you wake up. You would want to clean every place that you see there is dirt in it. You can easily pay someone to clean your home for you, your office space for you. But the truth is they may not even clean it to meet up with your standard as you would want it to be clean. But when it comes to your heart, it is your personal responsibility. Someone don't have to clean it for you. You have a responsibility to keep it clean. Because when you hide the word of God in your heart, it will shape your heart, shape the tone of your life, and shape the things that you do. Point number three, the heart is purified by faith. Your heart is purified by faith. Scripture makes us to know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. For you to have a pure heart, you need to build faith in the word of Christ. Christ came as your savior and my savior. He gave himself to be our sin. As scripture says that he who knew no sin was made to become sin. That all of us who were sinners should become the righteousness of God in Christ. Having faith 
And that word of God helps us to draw closer to him and receive the righteousness he has given to us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Believe there means faith, which means I'm believing in Christ and every word that he speaks. God who knows the heart showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them. Peter here was speaking concerning the Gentiles where the Jews asked them that they need to do a few things, a few works of the law before they can have a pure heart before God, before they can be accepted by God. And Peter said, no, God who knows the heart showed that he accepted them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did us. He did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. He purified their hearts by faith. God purifies our hearts by believing in his son. So by the time you believe in the son of God and the sacrifice of Jesus, that purifies your heart and you are given the Holy Spirit as a seal of your first installment that you are now a son and a daughter of God. Just like scripture says, they that are led by the spirit of God are called the sons of God. How did we come to this place? It was not based off on the works of the law that we can keep, but it's based on the freedom of God's grace given to us through faith, through our believing in him. So your heart as a child of God is purified by faith. And which means you should check back to the second point and know that it is intentional, not automatic. Christ has saved you. You should intentionally work towards becoming. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Becoming someone with pure hearts. Paul in Galatians 2 says, My old self was crucified with Christ. I no longer live. It is Christ that lives in me. The life that I live in the flesh, in my body, on this earthly body, is lived by faith in the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. So you know that the life you are to live as a child of God who wants to become pure in heart is to live being led by Christ, is to live following Christ, is to live believing in Christ by faith in the Son of God who died for me. So you need to have faith in the Word of God, allowing the Word to cleanse you, to wash over you, wash all the impurities, all the myths, all the fantasies that you've had towards life in all the facets of life, whether it's work-based, relationship-based, family best, marriage best, you allow the word of God to wash over you and give you a pure and clean heart so that you can now approach these things differently. So it's like your heart is a soil and the word of God is planted and by faith you decide to retain the word of God, to catch it just like a ground that is good. You catch the word of God and by catching the word, you allow the word to germinate and you nurture the word in your heart. You brood over the word, you meditate over that word and in that process of meditation, you allow it to grow. By the time this word grows in your heart, it will now build a harvest of a pure life in you. The fourth point is a pure heart leads to a pure life. I know there are many Christians who seek deeper fellowship and deeper relationship with God and some of them do not know how to go about it. And for the lack of knowledge of not knowing how to go about having a deeper relationship and fellowship with God, many have gone to become religious and just do the religious acts. But then secret sins are locking in their hearts. There are so many struggles that they are struggling through. A lot of Christians struggling with lust, with masturbation, with pornography and all other vices. Anger issues and all the works of the flesh is even evident in their life. But then in the religious space, they just come off as if they are godly. Some people can really put on a character but then it's not rooted in their heart. And that is why God desires that you have a pure heart before him. Because when your heart is pure, your life will be pure. So your deeper relationship and fellowship with God hangs on having a pure heart before him. And as the scripture says, blessed are they that are pure in heart, for they shall see God. This is where you can experience God. This is where you can have this union with God. Jesus said to the Pharisees, What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and you Pharisees? Hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. It's more about you walking from the inside out. God is not much interested on you acting out this good reputation before people 
but inside you are damaged. God wants you from inside out to be pure, having a pure heart before God. And now to do this is to come to God honest, is to come to God as you are. Because from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying and slander. These are what defile you. If you can walk on these internal things and get your heart to a place of honesty, of meeting God and telling God, these are my struggles. Help me with this. God can help you with these things. The fifth point, your heart is pure by transformation. The world has patterns and ways of doing things. And then growing up, every child grows up to meet a particular culture and way of doing things. Some of the things we learn, we learn from our immediate environment growing up. We do say that charity begins at home. Yes, it does. Also, every kind of evil can also begin at home, which is hatred can begin at home. A child can learn how to hate by seeing the parent do same. So we all grew up in a particular culture and we've had fantasies. It could be regarding relationship. It could be regarding a lot of things. And these fantasies could really make us have impurities in our hearts when it has to do with God and our relationship with him. And here God is calling us to be transformed and not be conformed. The scripture says, stop imitating the ideas and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will. By the time you allow God to do the work of transformation in you, which is you giving yourself over to God, like your old life, your old thoughts and everything about you, deciding to hand it over to God, like the point we made that Paul said, the life I live is not mine. I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. So you get to a place of being transformed. And transformation means metamorphosis. Just like the animal do metamorphose in a complete metamorphosis from the egg to the lava to the pupa and then to the adult thing, which is it transforms in its structure and its physical form. Same with a Christian. Your heart should be continually renewed. Your salvation is paid for once for all time. You have been made righteous once for all. But then your sanctification is daily. Your sanctification is continual. Your sanctification, as scripture says, is the renewing, which is, is the present continuous tense. You keep on renewing your mind. You don't clean your house once a year. You keep cleaning your house as much as it's dirty. By the time you have children at home, they are going to help you, give you work. And then it is your duty as someone that wants to keep his or her home clean to always do the work of cleaning and trying to keep them from making it get so dirty. Of course, we understand it's not easy. But then to your personal life, your heart is the home of your personal life. So it should be an intentional process for you to always check your heart. Get it clean. We are living in a culture that we can easily contact dirt and pollutions because the stories you watch on Instagram and WhatsApp and all those things that are being passed down, some of them are facts, but most of them are not wholesome. And we can easily pick these things and start living our lives because somehow it plays along with our emotions. It feels good, but then they may not be wholesome according to God's word. And that's why the scripture says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because as a man thinks, so is he. So by the time your perspective is not renewed to think like God, you can still keep on having the fantasies that you have concerning life and relationship and live that way. You can still keep on playing along with the culture and think that you can still be friends with God. But the Bible says and like friendship with the world is enmity with God. So I hope these few points I've spoken to you. I would like to hear your thoughts regarding how to have a pure heart before God. So make sure you leave your thoughts down in the comment section. If you like this video and the content in it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel too. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am Uwem Akwan. This is my YouTube channel. I make videos on everything about Christianity and life in general, but from the perspective of the scriptures from the perspective of the Bible, which is in the way I would like to put it is screening every thought and every action through the lens of the word of God. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.